ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this is going to be a real quick video. Just wanted to say that I have come up with an argument, and this is why it's taken me so long, because I'm bringing arguments that people haven't brought in the manner in which I'm bringing them. So I'm about to explain something to you, and I'm hoping that some of you guys are going to get it. Some of you are not, but I'm hoping that some of you guys are going to get it. Hold on one second. Now, you all will have to bear with me, because this is something, like I said, Mr. Richard Fuller. Got to give him his credit, because if he had not brought this to my attention, I would never be focusing on it. But he brought to my attention this last sentence of the Constitution for the First Amendment. The right of the people to petition the government for redress of grievances. Now, most people don't understand what redress of grievances means, but I do. Now, first of all, I want you to understand, Congress cannot make a law prohibiting, abridging, interfering with the right of the people to petition the government for redress of grievance. They are prohibited from doing so. Now, let's understand what redress is. Give me one second. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look up what redress means. And I want you all to understand how important this word is. Make reparations to amend or correct. So now, a sum of money paid in compensation for loss or injury. A now, act of correcting an error or a fault or an evil. So, pay attention so that you get it. You have the right to petition government to correct wrongs done to you and to be compensated for those wrongs. Like I said, Richard Fuller said, I know that if I give this to you, you will do something with it. Let me make sure you understand. Redress right wasn't just a title. It was specific to this information right here. We've come full circle. One more thing. One second. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now looking up the word reparations. Let's see what it means. Reparations is a payment made for damages or wrongful acts. The payment can be made to a country or a group of people or to one person. Cash is often used as payment. Sometimes other kinds of payments are used. Reparations is compensation for your injury, for the damage. So what my argument is, is that the courts, when they allowed the banks to take the property to cause injury to a party, they caused damage, they caused harm to both person and property, which is illegal. No matter what case you're bringing, if the judge fails to act, he's violating the law. And you have the right, pay attention, to sue the judge's insurance company. Now, why do you have the right to sue the judge's insurance company? Let me explain. I'm going to let ChatGPT explain. He only going to explain the beginning. He ain't going to explain the end. I'm going to let him talk. Chat. Hey, chat. Kevin, talk to me. The doctrine of vicarious liability assigns responsibility to insurance companies for compensating damages or injuries inflicted by their policyholders upon others. This principle is universally acknowledged, though it... Hold on. Hold on. Vicarious liability is the issue. Had I not taken this long, ladies and gentlemen, had I not focused on all of this, I never would have been bringing this argument. Now, here's the here's the crux of the argument. Let's go all the way up to the top because I want you guys to hear redress re implies reparations. Now, let's chat GPT explain to you what I'm what I'm talking about because some of y'all ain't gonna get the genius of it. Uh oh, I can't get it to talk because look, it's got thumbs down. It says, uh-uh. So watch this. Come on now. No, let's let's do the, the first question again, okay? I want y'all to pay attention to the question. Because we're talking about a judicial officer. When he violates your rights as a judicial officer, then the insurance company is liable. But remember, the First Amendment says you have the right to petition government for readers for grievance, which means the government must be insured because you have the right to compensation. So there must be insurance. That's why every public official has to be insured. The concept of redress, emphasizing reparations, and the correction of wrongs, is foundational to the principles enshrined in the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. 
This amendment reflects the nation's commitment to ensuring that individuals have the means to seek remedy and justice for grievances, particularly those arising from the actions of government officials. The requirement for government officials to be insured, or protected through statutory funds or risk management practices, serves as an implicit contract between those in public service and the populace they serve. This contractual understanding underscores the expectation that public officials perform their duties without causing harm to members of the public. Because you have the right to compensation should you receive injury from anyone, you have the right to petition for that compensation, which means you have the right to file a claim. Ladies and gentlemen, every judicial official who violates your right, you have the right to file a claim against this insurance. Well, you're gonna do so for the small claims court. This is what we're doing. They're coming after your properties, Bear with me, people, as I put this together. Like I said, nobody else thinks like me, but it's time for y'all to get y'all reparations, okay? Y'all don't have to get reparations for slavery. Go after the stupid insurance company for these judges. If they did not stop the bank from taking your property and the bank had no right to take your property, because why? Promissory notes are legal tender. Promissory notes, when attached to a... Federal Reserve Operating Circular Appendix Number 3 set of documents, the application process, then it serves as legal tender and it's a government obligation. You got a student loan, look up the fact that every student loan is insured by the government. It's guaranteed. Your home loan is guaranteed by the single family home loan guarantee. Okay? Please understand. You are right. Stop arguing with them. A judge wants to rule against you, you go after his bond. You go after his bond because the First Amendment right to petition for redress of grievance says they must be insured because you have the right to reparations should they injure you. That's why every public official has to be insured. It's either through risk management or through an insurance company, such as a surety bond or an obligations bond if it's on the federal level. You don't need to know exactly what the bond number is. You just need the First Amendment. That's what this is all about. That's what I've been doing. This is how I think. Now, if you go to an attorney and think he's going to tell you the same thing because he's supposed to understand the law better than me, then you go right ahead and you do that and watch yourself be done wrong. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's taking you too long. The reason why it's taking me too long because this is not something that you just think of overnight. This is a process. So let me show you the process. The first thing is, this is the one that's against the judicial officer itself. Pay attention. Well, the Federal Reserve Bank, we, we made it against judicial officer as well because we're going after the judicial officer and the Federal Reserve Bank. Pay attention. Why? Because the judicial officer allowed them to take your property when he know that they didn't have a right to take your property. They didn't provide any proof. They used the non-judicial foreclosure process, which is a process which you couldn't get a jury, which you couldn't speak. They took away all your rights and they didn't have the right to do so through misrepresentations, misinformation, intentional, willful, deliberate, wanton conduct by the defendant. This are the elements of fraud. That's what we're doing. This one is 16 pages. Then from this one derives the one about judges. And I'm on page 11 of 15. So bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, it's getting done. But again, this is not a cakewalk. I'm doing this for our people who are our clients. We're almost there. And now you get to go to small claims court and you sue the insurance company. You get to go to small claims court and you sue the insurance company for the Federal Reserve. You sue the insurance company for the bank. Now that's still gonna be the bank, but now pay attention. I want all of you to understand why this is so important and why I gotta go lay down because I'm tired, y'all. The reason why this is so important because nobody can claim immunity. There is no absolute immunity for the insurance company because insurance is a requirement of the First Amendment. That's what I'm doing. I am killing their stupid presumptions before they can even bring them up. Well, don't you afraid that you tell them in video that they're going to just be ready for everybody? I don't care how they going to get around this. How they going to get around this? They can't because they would have to amend the First Amendment, which they can't. Do you guys understand? My job as the presumption killer 
is to kill their stupid presumptions before they can even raise the presumption. Just that simple. Hey, I got to go. All right. Take care. I'm out of here. I hope y'all are too.